morning everyone. It, uh, today we're going to pick corn for the very first time. Uh, this is our John Deere 9600 combine. Uh, we bought a corn head uh, this fall to pick corn. We have always just chopped corn in the past. So this is a new experience for us. We've ch usually chopped corn for silage to feed the cattle. Today and this year we're going to uh, pick corn, shell corn, combine corn, whatever you want to call it. Um, we'll figure it out as we go, I guess. How's it going? Very good. So first time picking corn. Is that what you is that even what you call it? Is it picking corn? Is it shelling corn? Sounds like it depends on who you ask. Combining corn. Harvesting corn. We're putting corn in the bin. We're putting corn in the bin. So this is a little different view of uh, for it for us. Usually in the cab of the uh, silage chopper, our John Deere 5830. So in Kansas, uh, usually dryland corn is kind of tough to grow, especially in the western half of Kansas. We're kind of right in the middle. Um, and so, I mean, a lot of people, I guess, are, are starting to, drip, to grow more dryland corn, uh, low population corn, stuff like that. But in Kansas, if you grow dryland crops, it all depends on the rain. So if you get rain, you get really good corn for Kansas. If you don't get rain, you don't get good corn. So we've got a few more uh, fields. To, we've got three fields of corn this year uh, that we're going to pick. And uh, the other two are, is on a little better soil. This field was planned to be chopped. But we had yeah. our one field silage corn.
clean a grain bin that's uh, out here in the middle of a field that we picked up. Um, this grain bin hasn't been used in a while, I don't think. We don't really know the history behind it, but we're going to clean it out and put some corn in here. We're corn farmers. So, uh, there's a nice amount of poop on the ground here, some raccoon, some possum. There was a possum in here when we first uh, when we first opened the door. We found a possum, so should be fun. Dirty job, Peterson Farm Brothers. See the second bin. Survey the damage. Oh, this one's in pretty good shape. Not bad, not bad. and check it out. Found all sorts of golf balls out here. We're wondering if target practice. If these were used for target practice for you. Here's another tree on this back side. Pretty, uh, pretty good aim, I guess. Wow. Oh, crap. Someone can juggle. All right, we uh, got this one pretty much swept out. We're ready to go, except for a few missing pieces. Looks a lot better than it did. Here's all of the junk we cleaned out of it so uh, and uh, we didn't get the trees cut down because our chains my chainsaw ran out of battery that's my bad and over here this one's looking pretty good too worked hard on it oh yeah we got a nice nice uh, board this there this needs it's not gonna work be better Today I'm binning uh, the, some of the corn we picked this year um, and uh, we're putting it in these bins that we cleaned out uh, a few days ago and that Greg and I cleaned out and uh, so we're putting it in the bin and going to let you see how it all goes. Um, we're hoping to, it's a little warm uh, today and our 
but our corn is a 16% moisture but it's going to be pretty hot going into the bin so we're hoping in the next two days it's supposed to get down below 40 degrees and we're hoping to pull we have some fans to pull that cold air on the corn so we don't have any any dryers uh, here um, and uh, this is actually kind of new to us uh, but we we have the long hot dry days most years in Kansas to um, get the corn down to pretty uh, pretty dry moisture um, but then it's it's warm when we're picking it so we then we try to pull cold air on there when we can um, so that's the plan and but right now we're just getting it in the bin and uh, we'll do that in the next few days when it uh, gets cold so here we go Gotta charge my phone first of all. First things first, you know, you gotta do the important stuff. So we don't have any uh, fancy binning equipment because uh, we haven't done a lot of it. Usually we just bin wheat, but we're trying uh, some well, we, we uh, got access to some bins, and so we're trying it um, to do some corn because we feed a decent amount of corn to our cattle uh, grain. Of course, we've always done corn silage, but we're doing more grain now. So, uh, we don't have the fanciest of equipment, and I'm probably spilling some corn, but and we're in the middle of a bean field. But... Uh, that's all right. We're going to get the job done. I didn't know how else to do it. You crank and I'll do this. Did you close that valve? That sunflower is going to have to be sacrificed. Oh, there she goes.
Get over this way about a foot. Oh! So I'm uh, out here fueling the combine up, getting ready to hopefully pick some more corn today. You people that can grow the uh, over the national average for corn every year, like if you're disappointed with 150 bushel an acre corn, you need to just be thankful for where you live because this part of the field is for us is doing about 150 and it's awesome, it's like amazing. This doesn't happen around here very often. It fills up the bin so fast, and uh, we're enjoying it. And so, I want to talk a little about corn because corn gets a lot of hate. You know, there's everyone's trying to say, "Oh, we're we're brewing this without corn syrup," and "Oh, uh, you know, high fructose corn syrup is killing everyone." Well, okay, first thing. Anything and too much, too much of anything is bad for you. So yeah, too much sugar is bad for you. So don't eat so much sugar. And uh, too much water is bad for you, you know? So, but corn is really an amazing plant and we don't give enough credit, we hate on it all the time. I mean, look, this stuff has been capturing sunlight all summer long and put all its energy into this cob right here. Look at all that corn. It's got some insect damage maybe, but it puts it puts all its energy into that those grains right there for us. It's very easy to harvest. I mean, setting the combine to pick corn was way easier than setting one to to harvest wheat just right. I mean, there's like hardly any losses out here cuz it just it rolls through so well you can harvest a lot of bushels per hour and the the US is set up really well to grow corn and use it for all its different uses you can feed it to animals um, you can use it for lots of different people products uh, you can use it to make fuel and uh, you know humans have been working for many years on this stuff to uh, resist different pests and um, to be able to get good weed control in it and we're really good at growing it. This whole plant can be harvested uh, when it's wet for silage and fed to cattle, uh, good nutrition, or it can be harvested just the cob when it's a little wet, um, also for cattle, and uh, or you can let it dry down all the way and it can be harvested and put in bins and stored um, for, a, for a long time and, and kept uh, in good quality. It can be transported all around the world. Um, all because, you know, this plant puts all of its energy on that, on that cob right there. And um, it's just, it's also a very consistent product. So, um, you know, it can be, it can be mixed and traded. Um, so that it can it can be counted on to be similar you know um, a bushel of corn uh, grown right here in Kansas is just like a bushel of corn uh, grown in in Washington and it can be traded all around the world and that's very valuable when you talk about efficiency and stuff and yeah there should be there can be local markets for for different crops um, but corn is very valuable to to our world and yeah, we need to have good crop rotation and uh, take care of the soil. And we definitely try to do that on our farm. Um, Kansas can have um, a lot of erosion. And um, so we, and uh, also if we grew corn every year, um, we wouldn't be able to to get as good of yields on, on it. So um, we rotate it with other crops and that helps all the crops. Um, do better 
And so we think all farmers should uh, look into things to improve the way they do things. And if you're having a lot of erosion and um, a lot of diseases, uh, you need to look into different ways of doing things to improve that. Um, but we got to quit hating on corn because it's an amazing crop that can, can be used for so many different things and be grown in such a wide range of uh, climates and um, really adapts well to um, its environment that it's planted in. And uh, I think that's a really cool thing and sometimes it doesn't get enough credit and people hate on it just because it's grown so many places, but it's grown so many places because it's a really good crop. And uh, we're thankful to be growing it here this year. All right, into my rant, I'm sorry. Sunset, no wind, dust, dust sitting still, still. This is a pretty flat field, and uh, wherever the water sat, it drowned out the corn, which will bring down the average. But hopefully, we'll still average pretty good across the whole field. That's just the way it goes, I guess. Farmers get a lot of flack for always complaining about the weather, but too much rain can almost be more damaging than not enough, but you don't expect to get it just right, but we rely on the weather a lot, but that's also our job is to produce grain and products from the weather essentially from the earth some people have the luxury of irrigation and that always helps but you still need the right climate even with the irrigation this corn was planted at uh, I believe 21,000 seeds per acre which is uh, pretty low population. It might have been 20 actually. And then we figure the final stand is around maybe 19. We we plant low population so that when it gets hot and dry during the summer it can hang on longer. And we know that our, our top end yield isn't... We can still hit our top end yield even with a lower population. So that's just the way we do it. And we've done some fields as low as like 18,000. And I know some people that will go lower than that. And uh, so we we try different things to see, see how they uh, work. This was a soybean field last year that we were going to drill wheat on and then uh, it was so wet that we didn't really get a chance to drill the wheat so we decided to just go to corn on it instead and I think it ended up being a good decision because the 
well, neither the corn price or the wheat price are great, but the wheat is pretty much in the bottom of the barrel. And uh, this corn, we're actually going to put as much as we can in, in bins and feed it ourselves and hopefully make money through the cattle, <laughs> theoretically. replant some of those drown out spots and we literally never got a chance even until like the middle of July when this corn was pretty tall and and there was nothing we could really put in there so hopefully those spots grow some good beans next year or we there's a chance we put alfalfa on this field in the spring if the conditions are right, but uh, that's usually kind of hard to do. So we'll see. All right. Well, I think it's probably getting dark. Oh. Let's see if I can get this thing off.